you know, it is always fun to come back to the places that truly had an impact on you. Were it not for you and I, were it not for Cedar Falls, were it not for the people that I crossed paths with, I'm not standing here in another role right now. And so I love it. You know, all it really took was an invitation. I mean, what, what a great opportunity um, to have been here at one point and to know uh, so many of these young men and women have huge dreams like I did. And uh, they're trying to, to figure out life and trying to figure out how to accomplish those dreams. And so to, to have the opportunity at this stage of my life to come back and, and, and share a little of my experiences, share some of the lessons I learned along the way, um, was more than open for the opportunity as long as I could fit it into the schedule. No one's ever gonna believe in your dreams as much as you believe in your dreams, right? So often we want someone else to push us to a next level life. We want someone else to push us to a next level dream. And we think somebody else is always gonna be there and always gonna be willing to put in the work and always gonna be willing and pushing us to live a different level life. I'll tell you right now, you wanna live at a different level, you wanna dream at a different level, you're gonna to have to live at a different level all by yourself. The message is, is really just about taking advantage of your moments. Probably the hardest time in my entire career. And there were numerous times where you go out, and I know you guys have your spring game on Friday, I go out in the spring game, and I felt like I outperformed everybody in the spring game. Felt like I was the best player on the football field. And yet, over and over again, I find myself on the bench, and I find myself on the bench. And I had a friend of mine that was a little bit older, had a better relationship with the coaches, and I just went to him and asked, I said, do you mind going up to the coaches and just asking them why I can't get on the football field? I mean, I, I believe I'm the best guy out there. I know there's a number of players that think that I'm the, the most talented guy. Can you go ask them why I don't get an opportunity to play. So he went and asked him, came back and told me, and you know, he goes, what they told me was the reason you're not playing is because you're not a very good practice player. For me, I only got a game day once every spring because I never saw the field in the regular season. Why? Because of practice. Because I didn't go out every day and say, it's about being the best today. Yeah, nobody might even see this, right? The coaches might not even notice. But man, today, I want to be the best that steps on this football field. The only way for someone to know who we really are, what we're really going to be, how we're going to handle a situation, is what we do every single day of our lives. In practice, in school, the way we treat the people that are around us, right? The way we treat our parents. You know, I think about it as a father or a husband. And they only know, it's not what I say when the lights are turned on or when a microphone's in my face. What do I do every single day? Don't miss those little moments that ultimately are the ones that shape you accomplishing your big dreams, um, you know, because too often, too often they're missed. From you and I, I was fortunate that uh, although, although I only played one year, I got a chance to, uh, to sign with the Green Bay Packers. And I thought, okay. College didn't work out the way I wanted to. Four years on the bench, that's not how I wrote the script. Right, I was gonna play four years, I was gonna get drafted, it was gonna be easy. Didn't turn out easy. But still, with that, I got an opportunity to play with the Green Bay Packers. And I'll never forget, first mini camp, uh, I show up and, you know, I know you guys' playbooks are big. In the NFL, the playbooks are about that big. I remember them handing me the playbook uh, the night before the first practice. I remember walking out to the first practice and I'm walking by Reggie White and I'm walking by Brett Favre and I'm like, okay, this is it. Man, I, I made it. it, it's here. And I go out onto the football field and I remember my coach calling me over in the middle of the first practice. Now I went to that first practice and I thought, man, there is no way I'm gonna see the field. Right, I'm just kinda here, I'm learning, I'm gonna take it all in. And he calls me over in the middle of practice and he goes, okay, Kurt, go in. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second, you just gave me that playbook last night. I have no idea what's in that playbook. I have no idea what I'm doing. He's like, all right, I know, we just gave it to you last night, we just wanna see what you got, go into the game. And I was like, no, I'm not going in. First time, only time in my entire life where I told the coach, I am not going in. I'm not going into the game. I'm not ready for this. And I remember thinking in my mind, I'm like, well, cause, cause here's the thing, if, if I go in, and I screw up, all they're gonna see is that I screwed up and then they're gonna cut me because I didn't know what I was doing on that first day of practice. So I told the coach, I'm not going in. And ironically, what ended up happening is I got cut just a few weeks later 
And as I went to talk to them and kind of get an idea on why I got cut, they said, do you remember that first day of practice? When we asked you to go in the game and you said you're not going in the game? I said, yeah, yeah I remember. They said, can you imagine if we showed up on a Sunday afternoon and you were our quarterback and we didn't know if you were going to be afraid to go in and fail on a Sunday afternoon in the National Football League. There is no way we were ever going to keep a quarterback that was afraid to go in. And I'll never forget that because I sit here today and I'm so grateful that I got a second chance. But I don't know how many times I've thought and said, man, that one time that I, that I decided not to go in, that one time that I was afraid to fail, that I was afraid that if I went in there and did something wrong, that they were gonna let me go. That one time could have cost me my entire career. Why you ever wanna be just good enough? Why not wanna be great? And so I went on a quest from that point forward to go, okay, let's show people what greatness looks like. Let's show them what it looks like in practice. In practice, it starts in practice, in the meeting room. Let's show them what it looks like when you talk about leading your teammates, what it looks like in the huddle, what it looks like and how you treat your wife, right? What you do outside the building, every little thing. Why ever settle for good enough? Knowing that there's, there's so many kids um, that are in a position that I was in, you know, as you said, 25 years ago. But they're thinking the same things. They want the same things. They're wondering how you get from there to where I'm at. Um, it's just you know, an amazing opportunity for me to be able to, to share my story and to have the story that I have. And I think that's one of the coolest things is that you know, if I stood up here as the number one draft pick and you know, everything went according to plan, uh, it would be harder for many of these young men and women to associate with it. Um, because I have a weird story, I got a crazy story and I took uh, a lot of turns, I think that's the beauty in it is that there's probably every one of these athletes that are in here are going to be able to relate to some facet of my story and uh, to me that's the coolest thing is that if everybody can leave here going hey Kurt was where I was at one point or Kurt, Kurt was thinking at that time what I'm thinking right now or wondering what the future is um, that to me is the coolest part and I think I've got a great story that can that can really touch a lot of people.